Welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moussi. And our honored guest is Assemblymember Richard Gottfried, who's here, the representative for basically Chelsea and Hell's Kitchen and for many years, and he's here to join us. We're going to have an interesting conversation uh, about a bill that uh, the Assembly person's been working on. He's also chair of the Health Committee in Albany, and there's been a, a bill to introduce medical marijuana for many years in the state legislature, and of course, year after year after year, it really, it's tantalizingly close, but it gets nowhere. But and, first, welcome uh, to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, well, let's begin by uh, telling folks who might not know that much about politics and how their government is run, even though it affects their whole lives, exactly what it is that an assemblyman does. Well, I represent, uh, well, the, the New York State Legislature, <clears throat> like the Congress in Washington, has two houses, mm -hmm. an assembly and a state senate. Uh, there are 150 seats in the State Assembly. I represent one of them in a uh, part of Manhattan. Um, I have about 140,000 constituents, according to the new census. And uh, in order to, for a bill to become a law, it passes one house, then it passes the other, then the governor signs it, hopefully. Okay. And you, for many years, have been, let's get right down to it, because we're talking about the medical marijuana bill. A number of years ago, you introduced this bill, I think, back I've been hearing 97. about it. Wow, that, that long. And uh, and even last year it seemed it was tantalizing. Yeah, we close. thought it was going to We pass. thought it might have had a chance. And this is a bill, this is a type of law that is in many states. It's even in uh, New Jersey, right across the river, uh, some form. You know, obviously different states have different approaches to, mm -hmm. to dealing with this. But uh, there's a bill here in New York. And, and how is it that you haven't been able to get it? Uh, we, we've done it in California. Why not New York? Well, you know, every year in New York, at any well, about at any given point, there are about there are thousands, tens of thousands, of New Yorkers with serious, life-threatening, debilitating conditions, that whose either whose symptoms could be greatly relieved, or uh, aspects of their treatment would be better tolerated uh, if we would allow them to have medical use of marijuana, whether it's cancer patients who can't who have serious nausea from chemotherapy, uh, patients with HIV who uh, can't tolerate food and need something to help with their appetite, uh, patients with various neurological uh, ailments that cause serious muscle and uh, uh, pain, uh, patients with MS uh, are often, have often found that their symptoms can be relieved sure. by medical use of marijuana. Ever since the late 90s, uh, about 14 or 15 states have enacted laws to allow uh, use of marijuana for, uh, all the state laws are, 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 are different, uh, under some form of medical supervision. The bill that I've been sponsoring in New York would essentially set up a system parallel uh, to the laws that now enable a physician to write a prescription for morphine or codeine or uh, a long list of fairly dangerous drugs, uh, this would also allow them to write an order authorizing something that is actually clinically extraordinarily benign, uh, which is marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, our bill is uh, significantly, I, I think, the most restrictive of any of the laws in any of the states so far. Uh, nevertheless, you know, New York, while it has a perhaps a very progressive reputation, uh, there are also many issues on which we are very slow to move. Uh, this is a bill that has passed the assembly several times. Uh, it has, I think at any point in its life, been close to being able to pass the state senate, but of course you know, as they say, close only counts <laughs> in horseshoes. Enough, right? um, but uh, we are hopeful that we may be able to uh, get enough Senate Republican support to be able to do it this year. Now, may I ask what convinced you? Well, you know, it is, I mean, what, what attracted my attention to the issue was back in the fall of 96, several states uh, on election day that year by referendum enacted medical marijuana laws. And I read about that and said, oh, gee, that's interesting. Uh, and looked into it and found that 
uh, there is in fact very solid medical opinion that marijuana can have perfectly legitimate uh, and, and, and life-saving medical use, and that there is really no justification for uh, restricting it. And I mean, I, the, the more I've learned about the issue, the more convinced I am that this makes absolute perfect sense. And interestingly, about 75, 80% of New Yorkers, uh, according to every opinion poll, uh, share that view. New now, York. why hasn't there been a referendum here to show what the popular view is? Well, New York, uh, as a state, only uses the referendum method either for approving state bond issues or for amending the state constitution. Oh. We, uh, like many states, do not use the referendum process for enacting legislation, uh, which I, I personally think has protected us from a lot of really bad legislation, but that's probably a discussion for another program. Uh, so in, in New York, for something to become a law, it really has to go uh, So procedurally, it doesn't work that way. Here. Right. right. Well, tell us um, what exactly, what, what, what would your law do, and how does it differ from, let's say, California's law, or maybe mm -hmm. more apropos, how does it differ from New Jersey's law? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, the reason we need special state legislation is that under federal law, marijuana and a handful of other substances, such as heroin, are in a category called Schedule One of substances that under federal law have no legitimate medical use. And then there are Schedules Two, Three, Four, Five, Six of other controlled substances uh, like uh, morphine, uh, codeine, Valium, and a whole bunch of other things. Cocaine as well. Uh, it's uh, a Schedule II drug. It's used. It's yeah. Schedule II drug is used by uh, by doctors all the time. Right. Steroids uh, yeah. that are highly illegal yeah. without a prescription, but are perfectly legal with a prescription. But because it is federally categorized as Schedule One, uh, no physician who wants a federal license to prescribe controlled substances can write a piece of paper called a prescription for a Schedule One drug. And no drugstore can honor a piece of paper called a prescription for a Schedule One drug. You'll lose your license, your federal license. So what California and other states have done is to create a parallel piece of paper that isn't called a prescription. Uh, it's usually called something like a certification, which is what our bill would call it, uh, which a, anyone who under New York law can legally write a prescription for a controlled substance for whatever ailment is involved uh, could write a certification for medical use of marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the model that all the states uh, have used. Uh, at that point, the New York law and most of the other state laws diverge. Uh, first of all, our bill would have a fairly rigorous definition of what marijuana could be used for. Uh, by the way, there is nothing in the law that limits what uh, morphine or steroids or a whole bunch of other things can legally be used for, but we felt uh, politically more than anything else, we needed to draw a tight circle around it. And so, you know, the, the people say, well, in California, you know, if you have a hangnail or you just, you know, right. feel depressed, you, you can, from the right. That would not be the law in New York. It would have to be something that the doctor, if challenged, could defend as being a serious, debilitating or life-threatening uh, illness and, you know, feeling bad one morning would not qualify. Uh, secondly, the, the certification would be, would be time limited. Your, a copy of your certification would be filed uh, with the State Department of Health with your name and address and who the, who the prescriber was and um, all of that information. Where would you actually go Well, to that, get it? that's another difference. You know, people talk about, well, in Los Angeles, they've got you know, more dispensaries than they have Starbucks. Um, I don't know if that's true, but under our bill, you could only obtain the marijuana essentially from the same place you would go if you were trying to fill a prescription uh, for morphine. 
uh, a hospital could, uh, could honor a certification and, and dispense, or a pharmacy. Uh, so people would not be just selling, setting up uh, dispensaries wherever they want to. They would have to be uh, an entity tightly regulated and licensed by the health department, and actually they would be entities that today can be dispensing very serious, very addictive uh, medications. Right. Let me ask the next question that and, begs but, that. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, and the, the next question may be, who produces it? Exactly. And uh, there are some states where, you know, a dispensary can just get it from wherever they please, which would almost always be an illegal place. Um, under our bill, it would only be producible uh, by an entity licensed by the state, which could be a hospital. I, I'm, I'm under the impression you can grow marijuana in a closet with the right light, um, so I hear. Uh, the state could also license uh, entities that were not a hospital mm -hmm. uh, solely for the pur purpose of, of, of producing, those entities would be tightly regulated by the health department using the same regulatory framework that is used today by the state to license somebody who wants to manufacture uh, morphine or Valium or anything else. Given, pardon me, <clears throat> given the wide popularity of marijuana and the fact that 80% you know, would like to see some access to it, mm -hmm. and and, and right. a lot of people would probably want to do it for a lot of different reasons. Is it is it real? I know that the, the law enforcement authorities are pretty strict, and the the health departments are pretty strict. But once the cat's out of the bag with something like marijuana, mm -hmm. it's sort of like the cat's out of the bag with alcohol. It's it's not like heroin. I mean, very few. You know, even mm -hmm. all it's a, it's a sad thing how many people use heroin, but it's never going to be larger yeah. than a certain percentage. Yeah. Cocaine, larger than that, but it also has a negative aspect mm -hmm. to it that draws people yeah. away. Marijuana, the negative aspect might not come for 20, 30 years. Some people smoke too much of anything, and maybe they should mm -hmm. use a, a other device to use it. So I guess what I'm saying is that how do you prevent, just once the door is open, it's just the police are just going to find it impossible to enforce the marijuana laws. Well, a couple of things. One is the fact that any doctor can write a prescription for any for anybody for Valium. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the fact that New York, uh, about 20 years ago, seriously cracked down on keeping track of every Valium prescription, uh, prescription abuse of Valium has gone dramatically down. Uh, that's number one. Number two... Somebody actually checks everyone now. They don't just wait till somebody complains about it. Somebody, when they're written and go to a central location, somebody looks at it. Well, they, I mean, there are computers that keep yeah, track right. to see if Dr. So-and-so is way off the scale on, on right. prescribing. But more, more importantly, today, if you want to, if you're willing to break the law to get marijuana for recreational use, from what I'm told, it's really easy. I mean, any street corner, number one. Number two, legally, the punishment for possession of a small amount of marijuana for personal use is a violation, which is kind of like the punishment for littering. Mm -hmm. if, you, you, if you were to break the medical marijuana law to get marijuana for recreational use, first of all, you would first have to find a healthcare practitioner who was willing to sign his or her name knowing that it was going to be filed with the state, which could not only lose that doctor his or her license, uh, but several years in prison. Number two, you would have to be sending your name and address to the state in Albany. Number three, you'd be committing not a violation like littering, but a misdemeanor that can send you to jail for a year. You'd have to be enormously stupid to, take a, to use the medical marijuana law to obtain marijuana for recreational use. And I don't think that is a serious issue on, right. on this bill. People who want to break the law to use marijuana for recreational use have really no trouble doing that today. Uh, are you familiar with Barbara Jackson? She was arrested uh, some years, she's passed away, but she was arrested mm -hmm. some years ago in the Bronx. 72 year old uh, yeah, grandmother. Uh, grandmother who had right. cancer, and she would go uh, to the, her pharmacist, as she mm -hmm. said on her show. Uh, was on the right. street corner of the Bronx, and right. she was arrested, right. and uh, eventually released and tra charged dropped with an apology. But um, so you're saying that a person in that kind of situation, 
would therefore have a place to go where they wouldn't have to go on the street. Well, exactly. And risk being arrested or risk being mugged or risk being whatever happens on the street. Or, on the or, 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 be, or be breaking the law. And, yeah. you know, we live in a society in which, while there are a lot of people who don't mind breaking the law, fortunately we live in a society in which the overwhelming majority of people are not willing to just go out and break the law. So, and so, so people will get something that, that, that could help them that they might not have considered before because now... It's exactly. You know, when, we, when we've debated this bill on the floor of the Assembly, and it has passed the Assembly now two or three times, particularly in our first debate on it, person after person stood up and uh, Democrats and Republicans, downstate, rural, whatever, and told stories of loved ones who were, you know, it. dying of cancer or what have you, who either were, were willing and able mm -hmm. to, to break the law and get access to marijuana mm -hmm. and have their ability to tolerate chemotherapy uh, restored and be able to either be cured or, or live longer, etc. And other members of the legislature who testified in the floor debate about loved ones or, or close friends who could have done that but were not willing to break the law and who as a result suffered a whole lot more and died a whole lot sooner than people who than, were willing to break the law. Than, 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 and, and, and then was I necessary. See. So and, in a way you're and strengthening people were, like this pe strengthen legal people Exactly. People and following the law. Would, exactly. I mean, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a moving yeah. experience because Members of the legislature were 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 in tears in the middle of the debate, yeah. telling about because it's you know a their their, issue. their their aunt or their dear friend or their war buddy, what have you, mm -hmm. uh, you know who who suffered and died needlessly. Assemblyman, well, like, I'll go to John. Assemblyman Richard Gottfried uh, from Manhattan is joining us on the show. We're talking about medical marijuana, Johnny. I'd like to ask about the discrepancy in the federal and state laws mm -hmm. and your opinion about it. I mean, do you think that this is just complicating the future? Yeah. Well, first of all, we're, we're fortunate in that uh, between a couple of federal court rulings and uh, including Supreme Court rulings and the position of the, of the Obama administration's Justice Department, the federal authorities have made it very clear that as long as you are complying with a state medical marijuana law, they will leave you alone. So uh, and, and a few years ago, we couldn't have said that with real confidence, but at this point, it's clear that New York can, can pass this legislation. Pharmacies can dispense the marijuana, their federal license, uh, and in fact, the Pharmacist Society of New York State, which represents the independent pharmacies around the state, uh, has told me that getting this legislation passed is actually one of their highest priorities. Uh, Why is well, that? what about a situation like, well, say, the... partly because they understand that there's a real market here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the arguments we, we've yeah. made to the, to the state is that uh, the, if we tax the income that hospitals and pharmacies obtain from selling marijuana, we could probably bring in tens of millions of dollars for the state. Now, I personally don't think money is why we should legalize this. Uh, for medical use, but on the other hand, you know, we shouldn't ignore it's that either. It's a good either. sideline. Right? Yeah, it's a good <laughs> sideline. Right? Now, what about, with, back to the federal thing, a situation like where the Veterans Administration, say, mm -hmm. has approved of the use of uh, medical marijuana, but then a veteran is in a state that doesn't mm -hmm. allow it. You, you end up with these sort of strange discrepancies. Right. Uh, and I'm, 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 I can't comment on the law about the VA, but Yes, there are in, in, the, in the states, and I guess there's about 35 of them, that do not recognize legal use of marijuana for medical purposes. If you are using it, uh, you are breaking the law. I mean, Montel Williams, uh, who is in New York a lot, yes. and I don't remember what his ailment is, but he, uh, he, he, he would not be able to, to work or even walk, apparently, uh, but for uh, medical use of marijuana. He, lucky for him, lives in California and is able to legally obtain it. Uh, when he is in New York, uh, he is, you know, breaking the law. Uh, and I don't think anybody's about to stop and frisk Montel and arrest him.
but if somebody did, uh, he would be uh, guilty of a, a fairly low level offense in New York, uh, but guilty nonetheless. Well, I remember when Mayor Giuliani was in charge and the police were putting people through the system. And to be honest with you, Mayor, the current mayor has continued the policy. There's more arrests than ever for marijuana. Well, that is true, uh, and, 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 and that's a, a somewhat separate issue. But yes, every day in New York, over 1,000 people are, are arrested by the police on the street for possession of really minimal uh, amounts of marijuana. Uh, I think that's... I, I think the, an awful lot of those arrests result from, uh, I think, illegal police conduct, but that's a, mm -hmm. uh, that's a, a somewhat different issue. Right, that's a stop and frisk type of law yeah. that we're talking about. So in that way, marijuana is something that the authorities have been using as a method for checking people for other warrants and things like that. Well, or, or just generating arrests and overtime, but uh, again, different topic. Right. Um, and an by the way, I think if I, I don't think any of the three of us uh, on the street would ever be at risk uh, of that happening to us because Absolutely. we're we don't look like the people who are ordinarily arrested in that fashion. Right. Absolutely. That, that's where you can see it every day. I mean, uh, I knew Tompkins Square Park prior to 1992 and Tompkins Square Park after 1992. Mm -hmm. and now, believe it or not, it's easier to smoke a joint in Tompkins Square Park today than it was mm -hmm. when it was a homeless encampment, even though it people mm -hmm. said it was lawless, yeah. because the people who are there now, um, mm -hmm. God bless them, but they can get away with it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, well, very interesting. Where, where is it now? I mean, what, where is the medical marijuana bill in New well, York State also, now? Well, I'd yeah. also like um, to give out information about how people can get in touch with your office, how they can find out more about this bill that's pending. Okay. Um, first of all, contacting me is, in this modern era, relatively simple. Uh, if you go to the Assembly website, and which you could find by Googling New York State Assembly, uh, if you follow the instructions to find my name and click on it, uh, you will see exactly uh, uh, how and where to, to reach me. Uh, if you want to jot it down, my email address is Gottfried R, G-O-T-T-F-R-I-E-D, R for Richard, Gottfried R at, and here's the complicated part, assembly.state.ny.us, how we got so many dots in the Keep assembly right. email address, I do not know, I was not consulted, what can I tell you? Um, so Gottfried R at assembly.state.ny.us, or go to the assembly website, you can find me. The status of the bill, it, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it has passed the assembly two or three times in recent years. I expect it will come to the floor and pass the assembly again this year. Uh, we believe we will have a Republican senator introducing the bill, which it'll be the first time we've had a companion bill sponsored by a, a Republican member of the state Senate and they do have a majority in the state Senate. Um, Governor Cuomo, during the campaign, uh, sort of shot off an answer to a question saying he was opposed to medical marijuana. On the other hand, Elliot Spitzer said the same thing when he was running for governor. Uh, I think almost everyone around Governor Cuomo uh, is much more sympathetic to it, and I would expect that if we get a bill moving in both houses, we will be able to uh, convince the governor that it's a sensible oh, thing Oh, I hope to do. you would pass it in both houses and then have them veto it. Well, uh, <laughs> we'd, like to, we'd like to avoid doing that, um, but I'm, I'm pretty convinced uh, from my conversations with several people in the administration that uh, if a bill like ours was moving, we would be able to sit down with them, see if there's any changes they would want made, and that we would be able to get a version of the bill uh, that could that he could sign. Now, May 7th, the uh, annual marijuana march is kicking off in Washington Square Park at noon, and uh, wanted to know if actions like that are helpful to your cause and whether or not you might come down and uh, have a few words at our event. Well, you know, that's a touchy question. I, I, I think people who connect uh, the medical issue with uh, the sort of overall marijuana topic, uh, I don't think help the medical cause. Um, 
and the two issues really are very different. And I think for purposes of advancing the, the medical use legislation, I've tried very hard to, to keep the topics mm -hmm. separate. They, they really have a completely unrelated sets mm -hmm. of of, mm -hmm. of pros you're, and cons. You're not a pot smoker. You don't like sit back in the state capitol and have a smoke every once in uh, a while. I, uh, that has never happened, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dear me. I didn't um, think so, but I had to I answer. No, I, mean, I, <laughs> I didn't think so. I, I will not give you a Bill Clinton answer, but I, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know any member of the legislature who's ever uh, gotten stoned in the state capitol. Good. See, I asked the Other, question that way. There, there, there are more serious offenses right. going on place. in the state capitol, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, that are worthy of the attention of law enforcement um, and of legislative change. Um, and but that's I, another show. And that's a different topic. Right. Yes. That's another show sometimes. Thank you so and much. And I don't think I do those things either. But. <laughs> I don't think you do either. But, I mean, I, and, uh, I mean, we had a governor who was calling hookers, so, and I saw a client nine, so now I know it was true, so um, save us, please, save us. Right. Right. Uh, so we have a minute, minute and a half left. Uh, Assemblymember uh, Gottfried, could you tell us a little bit, uh, maybe just sum up what, 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 uh, what how people can, uh, or where things, well, we talk, talk about where things are at, but how, what would you like to say in the last minute? I think if, if people watching the show want to know what they can do to help, uh, if you don't live in my district, talk to your assembly member yeah. and your state senator, write them an email. Uh, and I think most importantly, uh, send the governor a letter, send the governor an email. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the governor's website, you can find out how to do that. Who in the state Senate is, uh, is uh, uh, State Senator Duane, has he been, he's been uh, supportive of this? Tom Duane yeah. strongly supports it. Uh, we do expect, as I said, to have a Republican on the mm -hmm. Senate side putting the bill in. I don't want to say his name until he has uh, gone sure. public with it, right. uh, but people should contact their state legislators and the governor. Well, what about the, the police authorities? Uh, you know, the, uh, I know that you had some problems with the, with the prosecutors, state prosecutor association. Well, the, the special narcotics prosecutor yeah. wrote a letter a year ago uh, attacking the bill, uh, which I think the most charitable thing I can say about her letter is that she must never have read the bill before she wrote it, because she was describing, I don't know, maybe the California law, I'm not sure, certainly not the New York bill. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dick, for coming on our show well, and, thank uh, you. and giving us this lowdown, which is very interesting for our uh, viewers. And uh, we'll be back next week, talk more about this uh, prior to the event on May 7th. So see you then.